Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 15th of February 2021 and the time has just gone 11.02 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, we had a strong finish on the U.S. markets um, last last week. Uh, we had a positive, a very positive move overnight in Asia, uh, with the Nikkei 225 uh, hit its highest level uh, in 30 years, um, and we, we're seeing strong gains uh, in European stocks. Uh, essentially, there is continued hopes uh, and the continued optim optimism uh, driven by the hopes that the Biden administration will sign off on its $1.9 trillion stimulus package uh, in the next few weeks. They're aiming to get that uh, signed off uh, without the support of the opposition, the Republicans. Um, also playing in the mix is the, the, the positive news in relation to the, the rate at which the UK and other countries are rolling out their vaccinations. Um, traders are banking on taking on the idea that um, the more vaccinations that have been rolled out, that's going to uh, speed up the process of gradually unwinding some of the restrictions on that are, that are on economies, and then that should bring about an increase uh, in economic activities sooner rather than later. Um, but one of the big, the big headlines on that, on that front has been the fact that the UK um, has managed to vaccinate, it hit its target, 15 million vaccinations by the 15th of February, um, there's already kind of rumblings and talking about kind of a roadmap to the end to, to the to the end of the lockdown being put in place. This sort of talk has really kind of helped um, sentiment. People are now are now thinking we're beginning to kind of potentially see the end of the lockdown. Not, not that it's going to be happening anytime soon, but things are heading in that direction. And with that, stock markets have been uh, lifted on the back of it. Um, volatility hasn't been particularly high today. Um, you know, with a couple of, of um, a couple of, of stock markets uh, in the Far East uh, were, were closed due to the Lunar New, New Year ho holiday. Uh, and on top of that, uh, today is President's Day uh, in the U.S. So the stocks, stock, the stock market in the U.S. will be closed. So with that, we haven't had massive volatility. We're probably not going to have big volatility today. But you know, looking onto onto the week, uh, we have a few big stories ahead of us. Uh, as always, with my video, I'll do the rundown of the week ahead. It can be found on our websites under cmcmarkets.com, under insights, and then under latest news and analysis. So tomorrow, um, Palantir, the um, technology company, the big data company, uh, they have their fourth quarter numbers coming out tomorrow. Um, EQT have four quarter numbers coming out on Wednesday. Uh, FOMC minutes will be posted on Wednesday. Uh, this is from the most recent Fed minute, Fed, Fed meeting, who has made quite clear um, that they're not going to be looking to adjust um, their asset purchase program anytime soon. Um, they, 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 they expressed, you know, they, they, they stated that even if inflation does tick up, that's not really going to alter their, their policy um, really kind of whatsoever. So that's going to be in, in focus. Um, CPI from the UK is going to be published on a Wednesday morning. This is going to give us a good indication of what demand has been like, uh, particularly in February, sorry, particularly in January, seeing as post-Christmas um, lockdown uh, very much very much in play. See what, what kind of state, uh, see what, what kind of gauge there has been uh, for demand in the in the in the UK economy. On a similar note, US retail sales will provide something similar. Are consumers going out and spending money? These are the questions traders are going to be asking when these numbers come out. Uh, we'll, we'll get into banking season. British banks uh, will kick off their uh, their earnings season this, this week. Uh, later this week on Thursday, we'll have the full year figures out from Barclays. Uh, one of the more kind of common themes of the last few reporting sessions, uh, many of particularly the European, many of the US banks have actually been reporting smaller than expected um, bad you know, provisions for bad debts in, connected to the coronavirus crisis. So traders are going to be keeping an eye out for that. What are what's, what exactly is going on in relation to that? The the, the net lending um, margins are likely to remain under pressure, but any kind of comments in relation to future lending prospects now that the Bank of England have kind of essentially talked down the positive prospect of negative rates in the near term, we could see some comments or language in relation to that. Um, Dropbox have four quarter numbers coming out on Thursday. 
Walmart, the major US re retailer, have uh, Q4 numbers coming out on Thursday as well. Once again, kind of not too dissimilar to the US retail sales, our consumers going out and spending money. How is the online operation um, as, as fared? Uh, NetWest, NetWest, um, formerly Rollback and Scotland Group, RBS, they have full year, figure, full year figures out on Friday. Similar situation with the, with, with, um, with Rollback, with um, Barclays. What's the kind of provision for bad debts going to be like? That's probably going to be the main focus uh, of, uh, of dealers' attention. Uh, also, finally, we've got some important economic indicators coming out. We have the flash, the flash um, surveys, PMI surveys, coming up for France and Germany, the two largest economies in the Eurozone and the EU. Retail sales figures are going to be coming up from, from the UK on Friday as well. So that, that's going to be important. Uh, once again, what happened to the UK economy in, you know, in terms of retail sales? The consumers go out and spend money. Just be mindful that uh, about a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, the Bank of England cautioned that the British economy could contract by 1%, um, in, sorry, contract up, 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 up to 4% uh, in Q1. So cons consumption is a fairly big part of the US economy, the UK economy. So seeing how these retail sales could, give us a, could, could set the tone for what to expect uh, from the rest of the quarter. And then lastly, speaking of the kind of pandemic, with the pandemic, it's obviously taking a huge toll on public public debt. So the net, pub, net public um, borrowing figure for the UK is going to be posted on Friday morning as well. Um, so coming on now to the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. It's been a pretty kind of common theme here. We've seen, we've seen the FTSE 100 hit its highest level since late January. We're back above this blue line here, the 50 moving average. Um, while we hold above that metric, which, which comes into play around 6,600, it's likely that the, kind of the recent upward trend, which ties in with the kind of more broader upward trend, uh, is going to remain intact. And if we move on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting around 6,900, heading back up toward the all-time, sorry, the, the kind of recent multi-month highs uh, that were set in early January. Notice on a few occasions, the, the, um, the market failed to break above the 50-day moving average. So for a while there, it appears that it was, was acting at resistance, but we could see a scenario was, we might see a scenario whereby old resistance becomes new support. So keep an eye out for the 50-day moving average. But even if you do drop below it, we could look at heading back down towards the lows of, of February um, in around 6,308, which isn't too far away from this one, from this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. And notice how that metric acted, you know, both as active briefly as support and also as resist briefly as support in August and also as resistance in September. So that metric has has been of importance in the past. So it could be of importance again in the future. Um, turning our attention now to what's going on in Germany, we're not a million miles away from a record high on the DAX. Uh, the market's in a strong upward trend. The pullback it had there last week was relatively was, was relatively small. We're still in, in the upward trend. While we remain, you know, comfortably above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, it's likely that the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue. Uh, we're currently trading uh, around 14,090. If you look at the press on higher from here, we could be looking at you know targeting 14,000. We could be looking at retesting uh, the you know the all-time highs that were set um, just only a week ago. And if we go beyond that, uh, we could then be looking heading back up towards heading up towards 14,200. 300 and so on and so forth. Uh, any moves to the downside could find support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving, 50 moving average. It has kind of formed in the last few months uh, of acting as, as both, you know, support, uh, both um, as, as resistance. So the metric has been important previously. It makes it more likely it will be important in the future. Um, similar situation to the FTSE 100. Take, it could be, you know, if, you have a, if you have a fairly big um, move lower on the DAX, we could look at retesting the lows of early February, which isn't too far away from it, from the 100-day moving average, and that comes into play in around 13,258. Um, looking over now, what's going on with the, uh, the U.S. markets? Uh, U.S. markets, the actual stock markets, the actual shares markets, uh, will be closed today because the country is celebrating President's Day, but the index futures are trading, um, and even though we're not we're not we're expecting the NYSE to open today. The Dow Jones futures are indicating that the market would be setting a new all-time high. So the markets are clearly in very strong shape over in the, over in the U.S. Um, if you look to kind of move on higher from here, because we're currently around 31,620, if you move higher from here, 
cubic knee targeting 31,700, 800, and then you know up towards 32,000 itself. Any moves to the downside could find support from this area here in around 31,000, and a move below that could take us back down towards this blue line here, the fifth in the moving average at 30,659. 30, and even if, even if you go below that, we could be heading back down towards the lows of early February. Sticking with the US, looking at the S&P 500, similar situation here, whereby it's um, whereby the S&P 500 uh, is you know pointing, you know indicating it will open at a record high should the uh, the, the stock market be open today. We're currently trading at 3,952. 3, if it continue to move upwards from here, you know the next really kind of big number that traders will be looking out for will of course be 4,000. Any moves to the downside. Could find support from the from the from the low seen uh, in the kind of in, in, in early February, um, just from north of three thousand eight hundred, in around three thousand eight hundred sixteen, three thousand eight hundred and three thousand eight eight hundred sixteen, three thousand eight hundred and eighteen, and below that we could be then be looking heading back down towards the fifth of the moving average unit, three thousand seven hundred and seventy eight, and a similar scenario. I have a big similar to the previous markets. Big move below that could take us take us um, back towards on the uh, past the the lows of February. And if we, if we break below the lows of February, we could then be looking at targeting this area here in around three thousand six hundred. Turning attention now, what's going on over in the currencies? Starting off with euro dollar. So the wider trend of euro dollar has been to the upside. I particularly look at the price action here. A really broad trend in euro dollar has been at the upside. It hit its highest in early January, it hit its highest level in over two and a half years. But since then, it's been moving lower, whereby we've had the lower low, the lower high, the lower low. But the candle we saw here on Friday, the 5th of February, um, which turned out, seems to be a bullish engulfing. The market press rebounded off the, kind of the recent lows that it set. But, and again, it's set in on the kind of towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. But it hasn't quite taken that out yet, so it seems to me that we, this is this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, is acting as resistance. While we uh, while we hold below it, it's like a big kind of wider, the near-term downtrend could continue. Um, but if we do manage to get break back above it and hold above it, we could then be looking at retesting one one spot 22, this kind of zone here, and then if you go beyond that. We could be looking at retesting the, uh, the recent multi-year highs set in early January in at one spot, 20, 20, one spot, 2349. Um, if, if the 50 moving average comes into play in at one spot, 2153, if we fail to take that out, it could be a sign that this little move here to the upside was only just was only a correction in the kind of in the, in the kind of near-term downtrend, and the market could be looking at rolling over on itself. And should that be the case? We could be looking heading back towards one spot twenty, back towards the um, the one hundred moving average, which comes into play at one spot nineteen eighty two. And if you go below that, if you have a break below the early, the the low on February the fifth, uh, which comes into play in around one spot nineteen fifty two, that could be a sign that we're in for further losses. It could take us back down towards uh, the lows of early December in around one spot nineteen twenty three. Take a look at our pound dollar, dollar the British pound has been doing well recently, well and um, it's been a strong upward gain. In fact, taking a look at pound dollar now, we're now we're trading north of one spot thirty nine uh, on pound dollar. So we're back at levels, uh, multi year highs to receive. We're back at levels last seen in August. Sorry, apologies, April twenty eighteen. So we're coming up, um, multi year highs have been set. Markets in a, in a strong upward trend. We see a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Taking a look at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, positive momentum is, 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 is rising. The market's moving higher, momentum is moving higher, so it seems that the, you know, that the momentum is with the bulls. If you do press it higher from here, we could, we could be looking heading up towards 140. It's a big number, and it's, it's less than 100 pips away, because we're currently in, in a one spot 3908, uh, so kind of 140 is the next big, kind of big level to keep an eye out for to the upside. Uh, any moves to the downside could find support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at one spot 3596. 
Notice how on a few occasions in this, in kind of, well, both mid and early and late December, uh, that metric acted nicely as support. So Canary has been up as active support in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of support in the future, but obviously there are no guarantees. Turn your attention now at what's going on over commodities. So um, one, of the, one of the kind of common themes of the last few weeks has been that there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between the US dollar and gold. Gold trades in dollars, so a, strong, so a weaker dollar often helps it, and conversely, a stronger dollar often, often uh, puts pressure on us. So even though the dollar is lower today, gold is still a bit lower because overall the, the traders are in risk on attitude. You've seen stock markets and metals perform quite well and oil perform quite well, which we'll come on to in a second. Um, so traders are keen, keen to take on risk, therefore they're kind of shying away from assets that are considered to be low risk, such as gold. So if you take a look at today's price move that's been nudging lower the last few days, that fits in with the kind of recent negative move that, that's been in play since early January. So if we do press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the lows uh, well, of last week in at one spot. Um, in at one spot, sorry, 1785, and a move below that could take us back down towards the lows of uh, late November in a 1764. Um, notice how when the market did have a rally last week, it ran into resistance that is the red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play in 1856. We need to kind of get back above that, retake that, and then hold above it before we could then begin to think maybe, just maybe, it's kind of broader, kind of very large trend, and a very large uptrend is, is, is going to be resumed. So to get back above 1856, we could then be looking heading and, and heading up towards the highs of late January in around 1875. Beyond that, we could be looking at tar beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 1900. And then from there, we could then be potentially looking up towards the highs of early January in around 1959. And then lastly, I come on to uh, the oil market, looking at Brent crude oil. So Brent crude oil has racked up a new 13-month high. The market's in a strong upward trend. A combination of things, tensions uh, in the Middle East, concerns about uh, um, dwindling stockpiles, uh, U.S. stockpiles, also playing into the mix is it's kind of the the Biden's chatter about the giant, the Biden stimulus package, and then on top of that, the story that vaccinations are being rolled out, and you know, it's, and a few months down the line, we could have n a number of major economies uh, roll back a number of their restrictions, and hence increase economic activity and prop up demand for um, for Brent crude. So. We're currently trading around 63 spot 34. This is the Brent crude oil cash contract. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could, we could be looking at targeting the highs of you know mid January. Um, we could be targeting a 66. Um, we could be looking at targeting 66 spot 44, the highs of mid January uh, 2020, so kind of over over a year ago. Any moves to the downside in a, in Brent crude oil could take us back down towards the kind of the kind of 60 bucks area, big psychological number, something that we would be keeping an eye out for, and a move below that could take us back down toward this area here, the lows of mid-January in it, in at, in at 54 spot 47. And notice how that coincides with the 50-day moving average, that blue line there, which acted as both resistance and also support uh, at last uh, back end of last year. So once again, if the metric has been uh, relevant in the past, it's some, it, it makes it, it makes it likely that traders will be looking out for it again in the future. Um, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.